In these next few videos, we're going to take an introductory look at systems of differential equations. We're going to answer the question, how do we solve a system of differential equations? And first we're going to look at the theory behind it, and then we'll take a look at a couple examples. As we look at this theory, the functions x and y are going to be functions of a third dependent variable t. And the method we're going to use to solve these is going to introduce this uh, operator d as the differential operator. And kind of as a subset then, d represents the first derivative, d squared would represent the second derivative, and d cubed, the third derivative, d to the fourth, the fourth derivative. This is going to allow us to take a system of equations such as x prime equals 4x minus 3y, and y prime equals 6x minus 7y, and generate the solutions for x and y in terms of this parametric variable t. Well, First thing we're going to do is we're going to set each of these equations equal to zero by moving everything over to the left side. As I do, I'm going to organize things, putting the x's first and the y's second. So I'm going to end up with x prime minus 4x plus 3y equals zero, and negative 6x plus y prime plus 7y equals zero. Then what we're going to do is we're going to factor out the x and y from their expressions. So when we have x prime minus 4x, when we factor out the x, we're going to be left with x's derivative, that becomes the d, the differential operator, minus the 4. And if we look at redistributing this through, we would have d times x, which means the derivative of x, or x prime, minus 4x. Continuing through then, we have plus 3y equals 0. We have a negative 6x plus, and when we factor out the y, we get a derivative plus 7 times y equals 0. Then what we can do is we can solve this system of equations using any system of equation strategy we've seen before. We could use elimination, we could use substitution, but probably the easiest way to go about it is to use Kramer's rule to solve. And Kramer's rule says that if we have a system of equations in the form of uh, something times x plus something times y equals a function, and something else times x plus something else times y equals another function. We can use determinants to set up a solution to the equation. We're going to set up two determinants to solve for x and to solve for y, one each. First, we can take the coefficients L1, L2, L3, and L4 times our x will be equal to the determinant of, when we're solving for x, the first variable, we replace the first column with the solutions f of t and g of t, keeping the second column, L2 and L4. And we can similarly set up determinants L1, L2, L3, L4, 
times our y, and this time we'll keep the same first column and replace the second column with our functions. These determinants then will give us a solution to any of these systems with constant coefficients. So let's see if we can take a look at some examples. And in this video, we're going to focus exclusively on homogeneous linear systems. And the first example we're going to do is that example we saw up in A1 before. And I'm going to jump right to, we wrote it with differentials as d minus 4 times x plus 3y equals 0 and negative 6x plus d plus 7 y equals 0. As we start solving for x, we're going to set up, using Kramer's rule, determinants with d minus 4, 3, negative 6, and d plus 7 times x is equal to, since we're solving for x, we replace the first column with the solutions 0, 0, and the second column remains the same, 3 and d plus 7. We will also similarly solve a determinant of d minus 4, 3, negative 6, and d plus 7 times y. And because we're solving for y, the second variable, we'll replace the second column with 0, 0, keeping the first column as d minus 4 and negative 6. This will give us a linear system that we already know how to solve from prior chapters. Let's first look at the x's. When we find our determinant, we multiply the first diagonal, d minus 4 times d plus 7. And then we subtract the product of the second diagonal. Subtracting negative 18 makes it plus 18 times x equals 0 times anything is 0. Minus is 0 gives us 0, which is nice because this creates a homogeneous higher order differential equation. We have d squared plus 3d minus 28 plus 18 is minus 10x equals 0, which we know the characteristic equation, the part in the front, is going to factor to d plus 5, d minus 2. And so d is equal to negative 5 and 2, which we know means our solution is of the form x equals our first constant times e to the negative 5t plus a second constant times e to the 2t. Now we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. And what you'll notice on the other side happens is we end up multiplying the same pieces together, d minus 4 times d plus 7 minus a negative 18, which is plus 18 times y equals 0 minus 0 is 0. So we're going to end up with the same solutions because that's identical, d equals negative 5 and 2. Now, when it's non-homogeneous, it does not necessarily come out exactly the same. But since we're doing homogeneous, we got the same equation on both sides. We know then our solution is y equals. Now, it's going to be a different constant. So we'll call it c3, e to the negative 5t, plus a c4, e to the 2t. However... We only actually had two derivatives in our original expression. We had an x prime and a y prime. With two derivatives, that means we should only have two constants. So what we still need to do is find a relationship between c1, c2, c3, and c4. Because there were only two derivatives, we only want two constants. 
It doesn't matter which two we use. If it's more convenient to do C2 and C3, we can do C2 and C3, or C3 and C4, or C4 and C2. However, it's most common to try and make the entire expression only use C1 and C2. So how do we do that? Well, we have some choices. We're going to go back to the original functions, and I like to go back to where we set them equal to zero. There's two functions we can choose from, and it doesn't matter which one we choose. I'm going to go back and choose the x prime minus 4x plus 3y equals zero. By substituting our solutions we found into this equation, we should be able to find a relationship between the constants. So first we have x prime. So if I were to calculate x prime, we would have negative 5c1 e to the negative 5t plus 2c2 e to the 2t. Then we do minus 4 times x. Well, x we found out was c1 e to the negative 5t plus c2 e to the 2t plus 3y, y we found out was c3 e to the negative 5t plus c4 e to the 2t. And we know this whole thing needs to equal 0. So what we've done is we've replaced the x prime, x, and y with the solutions we just found. Now what we can do is we're going to distribute and combine like terms and then use those results, those coefficients, to figure out our relationship. What I find is it's easier to organize by types of terms. We're going to have some e to the negative 5 t's. And we're going to have some terms that have e to the 2 t on them. So we're going to organize them by the coefficients of e to the negative 5 t and e to the 2 t. So e to the negative 5t is here, here, and here. And when I multiply through, we're going to have negative 5c1 of those e to the negative 5t's. Distributing the 4 gives me negative 4c1 of the e to the negative 5t's. And it gives me 3c3 of those e to the negative 5t's. In the end, I want to have 0 of everything. So this should equal 0 because we have 0 e to the negative 5 t's in the end. Simplifying this, we end up with negative 9 c1 plus 3 c3 equals 0. Adding the 9 c1 to both sides and dividing both sides by 3, we find out c3 is equal to 3 c1. So when we go back and rewrite our final answer, we're going to replace the C3 with three C1s. We can do the exact same thing with the E to the 2Ts. E to the 2Ts are located here, here, and here. So we end up with 2C2, E to the 2T, minus 4C2, plus 3C4, and we want to end up with zero of these e to the two t's at the end. Combining like terms, we get negative two c2 plus three c4 equals zero. Adding the negative two c2 to both sides makes it positive two c2. And dividing both sides by three, we get two thirds of a c2. So when we see the C4 in our answer, we're going to replace it with 2 thirds C2. Now we can express our final results for X and Y from up above, but with only two constants of integration, like we would expect. We know then that X is equal to C1 e to the negative 5t plus C2 e to the 2t. And y is equal to c3, which is the same as 3c1s, e to the negative 5t, plus c4, which is 2 thirds of a c2, 
e to the 2t. And now we have a solution to the system of equations that we had up above. Let's do one more example that might be a little more interesting than this one. And this time we'll start from the beginning. We'll start with x prime equals x plus 2y, and y prime equals negative 4x minus 3y. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this equal to 0, or specifically move all the x's and y's to the left. It gives me x prime minus x minus 2y equals 0. A positive 4x plus y prime plus 3y equals 0. Then we can rewrite this using the differential operators by factoring out the x. Factoring out the x leaves behind a derivative and a minus 1 times x. Minus 2y equals 0. A 4 times x plus... Factoring out a y leaves behind a derivative plus 3 times y equals 0. Now that they're set up as differentials, we're ready to set up our Cramer's rule. Let's first solve for x. Cramer's rule says we're going to take the determinant of the coefficients, d minus 1, negative 2, 4, and d plus 3 times x is equal to the determinant of replacing the first column with the solutions because we're solving for the first variable and negative 2 and d plus 3. Simplifying then, we're going to have calculating the determinant d minus 1 times d plus 3 minus a negative 8 which in this case becomes plus 8 times x equals 0 minus 0 is 0. So we have d squared plus 2d minus 3 plus 8 is plus 5. x equals 0. This one does not factor, but fortunately we can complete the square or use the quadratic formula on the factored part, d plus 2d, subtracting 5 equals negative 5. Half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and we get d plus 1 squared equals negative 4. So then d is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2i. It's complex in form. We know what that means. That means x is equal to e to the negative t times c1 cosine of 2t plus c2 sine of 2t. And we've got our form of our x equation. We still need to find the y. We set it up in much the same way, d minus 1, minus 2, 4, and d plus 3 times y equals, replacing the second column, because we're solving for the second variable with zeros, d minus 1 and 4. And this one's nice because it's homogeneous. We're going to end up with d minus 1, d plus 3, plus 8 times y equals 0, which is essentially the exact same function we were solving before. So everything's going to be exactly the same. Homogeneous is nice that way. So we end up with y equals e to the negative t times a new constant, c3, cosine of 2t plus c4, sine of 2t. And then again, all we have to do is go back and figure out the relationships between C1 and C2 so that we can express this with only two constants, not four constants. 
We can use either of the two original equations. I usually try and pick the one that has fewer coefficients, but it really doesn't matter which one you use. So I'm going to use the x prime minus x minus 2y equals 0. And then we'll plug in for x prime, x, and y to find our relationship. As we're calculating x prime, you'll notice we have a product. So we're going to have to use the product rule, which is the derivative of the first, negative e to the negative t, c1 cosine of 2t plus c2 sine of 2t plus e to the negative t times the derivative of the second part, which gives us negative 2c1 sine of 2t plus 2c2 cosine of 2t minus x. Well, x is e to the negative t c1 cosine of 2t plus c2 sine of 2t minus 2y. Well, y is e to the negative t c3 cosine of 2t plus c4 sine of 2t. And it should all equal 0. As we multiply this out, it should simplify to really only have two terms, a cosine, or actually an e to the negative t cosine of 2t and a sine of 2t with the e to the negative t out front. So I'm going to organize my coefficients in that way so that we can start solving. As we distribute our cosine terms are here, 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 and here. So we've got a negative c1 on the cosine. We've got a 2c2 on the cosine. We've got a negative c1 on the cosine. And a negative 2c3. That should equal 0. On the signs, we've got a negative c2. Looking at the signs, they're in four places here. Then we've got a negative 2c1. We've got a negative c2, and we've got a negative 2c4. And that should also equal 0 because we don't want it to equal any e to the negative t sine of 2t. These are going to be pretty easy to solve for c3 and c4. When we combine like terms, we've got negative 2c1 plus 2c2 equals, when I add 2c3 to the other side, dividing everything by 2, we get c3 is equal to, and let's change the order, let's make it c2 minus c1. That way the first term is positive. So what we end up with this time is c3 is going to be replaced with a relationship with both c2 and c1, but that's just fine. On the sign, Combining like terms, we get negative 2c2 minus 2c1 equals, move that negative 2c4 to the other side to get 2c4. And dividing both sides by 2, we get negative c2 minus c1. And I'm going to just go ahead and factor out that negative, so we have c2 plus c1 equals c4. And so that's what can go in and replace the c4 up above in our y equals equation. So this gives us our solutions for x and y. x is equal to e to the negative t times c1 cosine of 2t plus c2 sine of 2t and y is equal to e to the negative t times c3 which is c2 minus c1 cosine of 2t plus c4, which is negative c2 plus c1, times the sine of 2t.
and we've got our solutions to our system of differential equations. Now it's your turn to practice some of these so that you can get comfortable with these and doing well at them. Take a look at them and let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.